everyone. Welcome back. Yeah, I know we haven't been real good at updating weekly. We have absolutely been swamped. Don't know what's going on in this industry. It's pretty exciting, but uh, we just literally have a hangar full of airplanes every week. So we're running hard to get things done and forget to take time to show you everything. But this past week, we've had a couple come in here that just have really been standouts and we wanted to point some things out to you. And it has to do with maintenance and maybe, uh, I don't know if you want to call it uneducated maintenance, uh, don't want to be accusatory, but we're flying around single engine airplanes and it really is important to do things right. This one came into us, it's an RV9 just recently purchased and uh, he was assured everything was up to snuff and done properly and the more we got into it, the more things just really stood out as being very problematic. Uh, cylinders were replaced a couple of years ago by an ANPIA. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, intake gaskets have multiple gaskets on it. In one case, they have three gaskets on, including a court gasket. And, uh, you know, I figure I've looked at at least two, maybe 4,000 cylinders so far. Never seen a court gasket. Can't find a court gasket part number anywhere. So I don't know what that's all about, whether it's sloppy fit, et cetera. All the other intake gaskets had multiple, intake tubes had multiple gaskets on them as well. They're supposed to use one gasket, okay? So if you're putting on something more than one or what's called for, perhaps there's something wrong. So that kind of got our antenna up on some other things. We started looking around. So the airplane's about 20 plus years old. Uh, looks like it's been well taken care of. The paint looks nice, et cetera. Uh, magnetos, uh, never had a 500 hour service bulletin done. They are slick magnetos. We've got about 900 hours on this aircraft. So we tore those apart and sure enough, they did need uh, the 500 hour service bulletin done on those, which includes points, rotary gear, etc., kind of thing. So yeah, we've got two ignition systems, but you ought to take care of them. We started looking around at other things, uh, the propeller. 20 years old, so that's at least 10 years past what I would say is the furthest you wanna go on an overhaul. Yeah, it says eight years, so maybe we're 12 years past, right? So we pulled that propeller off. Hoses the same way, these are rubber hoses. They have an eight year kind of, you know, recommended life and they're 20 years old. These are all pretty hard. If you look down here, this really stood out. I don't know if you can get a good picture of this, Nick. This is an airflow performance injection system. See this diffuser here? It's not doing any good up on top of this airbox plate. This diffuser is supposed to be on this side of the air plate, so it smooths the airflow coming into the fuel servo. That's just, that's just plain wrong to have had that on there all these years. Somebody look at it and look at it and look at it. Multiple owners and it's just been, uh, you know, installed wrong. Look at this anti-splat arrow nose job. You might have to get a shot of that from the front. That's just sloppy, sloppy workmanship. Reality is, I don't know how much good that will do, actually. So you spent all this money on something, and uh, it's not lined up, you know, in parallel to this uh, strut here. So it's not going to, you know, maybe apply 40% of the uh, preventative force there when the nose gear tries to uh, turn over. I don't know. We had a whole bunch of other stuff. I can't think of anything right off the top right now. Nick, can you? Not that I can think of. Uh... Yeah, we're still looking and we're still doing things. So that was kind of get your, you know, it's not that, hey, look what we found. It's please pay attention out there, especially for those of you who are second and third owners. Uh, have somebody do maintenance on your aircraft that's familiar with the aircraft and the systems that go on there. Airflow performance systems aren't something that you see in the certified world typically. So they're more prevalent in the amateur built world here. And so somebody coming from the certified world may not even recognize that that thing, it looks like a plate, maybe. it looks like a, a, a reinforcement ring maybe to hold on the plate, it's not. So again, that's why you wanna get somebody that's familiar with your airplane. We have an airplane over here in the background. Uh, if you wanna walk over here and take a look at this one, Nick. Uh, here's another one, a pre buy is done in California. You're gonna read about this one in kit planes and sport aviation actually. It should be out here in a month in sport aviation. Uh, this was a pre-buy that was done in California. Unfortunately, I couldn't get out there to do it, even though I was asked, it's just too far. And uh, so the, the, uh, they actually took a, a very qualified pilot from here at Falcon Field, luckily, to go out there, bring it back uh, from California all the way to Atlanta, and uh, landed here in Atlanta, and then went out to do what was a final training flight before the new owner could take it down the road to his airport. And uh, they had noticed vibrations coming all the way back from California with this one. 
at various RPMs. And uh, on this, this flight, which was the final flight before the new owner was gonna take it home, upon landing, the propeller, I think it's over there on the floor, and it departed the aircraft. So I'm gonna say that again. The <laughs> propeller departed the aircraft in the flare. Luckily, a very experienced pilot on board the aircraft uh, retarded the throttle immediately, uh, went to apply brakes. Guess what? The brakes failed because the brake reservoir was empty. Should have been caught on the pre-buy. And then the more we got into this thing, it was, ju it was just horrible. Engine controls here, if you can zoom on in on this, Nick. Engine controls are mounted, they were never mounted to the engine. They are mounted to the engine mount, both mixture and throttle. Dumb. This one you can see here had a brass extension on it. Uh, it's actually a turnbuckle. Uh, no jam nut here, no safety wire on this. Uh, and then it was very interesting. If you look on the sides of the aircraft over there, there are no fresh air inlets on either side of the aircraft. And, you know, it was kind of cool being winter this time of the year, they're coming back. And the new owner told me, well, you know, there was warm air coming out of the uh, vent on the, on the co-pilot side. I said, well, that, that, should, that shouldn't work that way. So I traced the duct coming from what would be the fresh air vent on the panel for the co-pilot. And, you know, we get all the way to the engine compartment. They're drawing heated air from the engine compartment. Boy, talk about a source for... Uh, carbon monoxide and then there was no inlet again on the pilot side and in fact the fresh air vent on the back side was never connected to anything it's just sitting there connected to the cockpit so i can't imagine how hot this airplane would be in the summertime with this with this glass uh, canopy here with no fresh air at all uh, and we found a bunch of other stuff in the engine compartment as well bottom line is this what happened on this propeller is Again, somebody doing maintenance that maybe not necessarily understand how things work. They took a metal propeller that was on this aircraft and replaced it with a composite propeller. Now, metal propellers don't require a crush plate. We have that crush plate around here somewhere, but a composite propeller does require a crush plate. It goes on the front of the propeller, so it spreads out the torque, the force of those bolts. In this case, they actually added, can't tell when, we can't even tell when this, this composite propeller was put on the aircraft, but we do know that 20 hours prior to this sale, a new cowling was put on, a Sam James cowling, along with the books say a crush plate. We looked at this crush plate and this crush plate is about seven inches in diameter versus the required six inches in diameter. So this crush plate was actually sitting outside of the diameter of the forward uh, spinner bulkhead. And so what happened over time, you torque those bolts down and that propeller really never ever seated against the flange on the engine. And if you take a look over here, Nick, we can show you what happened to the bolts. So here's the bolts. Luckily they were all lying in the spinner. Three of them were actually sheared. If you can see these, Nick. You yeah. Three sheared. The other three stripped the threads coming out. Um, again, these people were extremely lucky. I told them I want their guardian angel. I mean, to fly across some of that hostile territory. Not, not that it would matter when a propeller comes off, but, uh, um, you know, that's it's pretty serious stuff. So, uh, you know, when you're doing things, yeah, as owners of experimental amateur built airplane, one of the privileges we have is to be able to do all of our own maintenance. Major modifications require, uh, you know, actually going back into phase one again. Can't tell that that happened with this airplane, but nonetheless, it was a 30 hour later failure. So typically you go back into phase one with a major modification, such as a propeller, a metal propeller, two blade to a three blade composite, it's pretty much a major modification uh, that would require at least five hours of flight testing. In this case, hmm, that may have not shown anything. However, having an a and or somebody else around that understands how serious it is to actually change propellers on a single engine airplane, all the proper things that need to happen to make certain that it's safe, it doesn't fall off, get another set of eyes to look over when you're doing that stuff. This could have had very, very tragic outcome. It worked out okay. Unfortunately, it's very expensive for the new owner. Unfortunately, we have an airplane that now um, requires a teardown on the engging because uh, like Homing says, propeller separation requires a teardown. 
So there's a, you know, $15,000, $20,000 expense there, plus all the labor to remove it. Luckily, we'll be able to fix all the other stuff that we found with this aircraft. But it's disappointing to everybody. At least everybody walked away. Nobody got hurt. Um, just ask you to pay attention out there. There's nothing wrong with getting somebody to look over your shoulder. As a matter of fact, if you look over here at this, I'll call it beautiful RV-10, that in <laughs> fact is my RV-10. It's in for a condition inspection. Notice the propeller is missing. I do walk the talk on uh, requiring, you know, propeller overhauls at least close to the time frame that the manufacturers recommend. Here. Thanks.